Brakthia Hawo, Brakthia Washai, Brakthia Hawo, Brakthia Washai, Brakthia Hawo, Brakthia Hawo, Bashim Yawashai, Bahashim, Rikako Dash, the blindness of the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone with you well. Salutations to the whole field elect out there. You Akim, does the document that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. On the pre Shaman, and this week's topic is going to be entitled The Avant Garde Hypersonic Missile is One Sharp Arrow. Right, the inspiration for this show comes from the fact that, um, uh, just building upon you know, the apostles did a lesson, Apostle Latahar did a lesson on this, uh, it dropped. Also, watch the video on it on defense updates, which I recommend brothers subscribe to. And of course, the uh, apostles briefly mentioned it Saturday camp, it's a hypersonic uh, glide vehicle. This missile right here, there's uh, three different ways to hit hypersonic um, speeds. But this one, the way it uses it, it uses um, it's shot ballistically. But then it it it, it um, when it shots ballistically, it goes out to the outer rim of the uh, solar um, solar. System. It goes uh to outer space, for lack of a better term, but not fully outer space. And then it comes back in to achieve hypersonic speeds. And um, at that point, you know, none of the parts that are moving are mechanical, and Vladimir Putin. President of Russia compared it to being hit by a meteorite. It's powerful, man. Now I wanna I wanna bring out a scripture real quick before we continue. This is Ezekiel twenty one and nine. It says, Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh Shai, A sword, a sword is sharpened and also furbished. A sword is just anything used. <clears throat> as an instrument of this, of destruction you know if you were to take this literally you know even in today's time they say don't bring a knife to a gunfight right a, a sword wouldn't do anything against a, your modern day gun but you have to understand when the bible says the word sword it just means an instrument of destruction for example um you know king david said you know protect me from the wicked which is thy sword right so the wicked which is a so-called white man malachi the first chapter the fourth verse He's a pretty much a death incarnate, a human instrument of destruction on a planet Earth. So sword just means destruction. Now when it says it's sharpened, when you sharpen a sword, it becomes more and more lethal. You know, you sharpen anything, it could become lethal. Heck, in jail, they're killing each other and shanking each other with, by making um, toothbrushes sharpen. Right? So, you know, when you sharpen something, you make it more deadly and it's furbished. As technology moves um, forward, these things become more uh, advanced and more destructive. And heavy it's heavy because these things are going hypersonic speeds now, man. Look, anything that's traveling five times the speed of sound or more, uh, above five times the speed of sound, is considered hypersonic. Anything other than that is supersonic, all right? Uh, I'm going to read verse 10. It says, It is sharpened to make a sore slaughter. Yeah, these things, these missiles that are being built, they're not built, you know, to be put in a museum or to just, you know, look at or to flex. Eventually, the most is going to have these missiles <clears throat> do what they are meant to do. All right? By the way, this uh, missile is able to carry two megatons of TNT. So, to put that in perspective, um, Little Man and Fat, uh, fat Boy... The bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki yielded no more than 22 kilotons at max. 22 kilotons. A thousand kilotons is one megaton. So this thing is able to carry up to 2,000 kilotons of just sheer destruction, man. And that's all the most high behind that. It said it's a sharpened to make a sore slaughter. So that's how it's going to do it. It's going to make a sore slaughter that way. It said it is furbished that it may glitter. And these things are going to literally glitter. All right. Uh, there's a scripture I have here in the in the list in Jeremiah where it, says it's gonna, where it says make bright the arrows. It says it is furbished that it may glitter. Should we then make mirth? Exactly. So knowing that these things are about to do what they're going to do, shall we be in a happy-go-lucky state of being? Hell no, man. All right. The tension is that of war. Okay, that's the tension. That's that's what we should be getting to. That's what we should be prophesying. That's what we should be letting our people know. It says, Should we then make mirth? It contemneth the rod of my son as every tree. So, 
the point being is this glittering sharp sword is the hypersonic missiles, man. All right, it's also referred to as an arrow in the Bible. Um, they had a movie called Broken Arrow, and a broken arrow represented a defective missile. What I want to do is I want to go in a dictionary and actually look up arrow in uh, the word net dictionary. So look at let's look at the hypernym for arrow. All right, verse. Uh, this is the second definition: That's a, a projectile with a straight thin shaft and an arrowhead on one end and stabilizing veins on the other. So you see how it acts as a, uh, an arrow because it has the nuclear warhead and then it's being guided. Uh, has its own tail, if you will, that guides it. It says, and if, and if you know anything about the arrow, the blunt of the arrow is in the, the arrow head. Same thing too with these missiles. The blunt of the pain is in the nuclear warhead, as it says in the book of Revelations. They had do hurt. It says, um, on one end and stabilizing vents on the other, intended to be shot from a bow. The bow represents the silos. Because that's how these missiles are shot. But the bow could also represent a jet. Because these things are not only shot from um, jets. They also shot from the ground. They shot from submarines. There's different bows you could use. Just like how you have different bows in it to hold an actual arrow. Uh, these things could be released from different bows. Um, they could also be released from craft. Uh, air carriers. A whole bunch of different things, man. It says intended to be shot from a bow. Hypernum missile. So a, lar a larger definition of an arrow, that's what a hypernym is, is a missile. All right? So the missiles and arrows are, are uh, um, like synonyms pretty much, you know what I'm saying? And it represents these nuclear missiles that's going to be shot from one end of the earth to the other. Isaiah 34 and 5. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea. And upon the people of my curse to judgment. So this missile is going to come upon the people. Who's the people of the Lord's curse? You Edomites, you so-called white people. It's going to come down upon you, man. All right. There's no way to brace yourself for what's to come. All right. Because a hypersonic missile, once it's been shot, there's no bringing it back and there's no escaping it. You have the missiles able to come from Russia to America in less than 20 minutes. And there's no... Um, defense against it. Even the current defense system that goes against uh, ballistic missiles, the ballistics missiles have a um, predetermined course, so you can intercept them. It's not even easy to do that, you know. You you have failed test of um, a, um, a control situation where it failed to take down a ballistic missiles because ballistic missiles can reach hypersonic speeds, right? But they're not considered truly hypersonic because um, they still follow a ballistic path true hypersonic glide speeds is a, is a, is, a, is a it's a whole nother level damn near unstoppable and russia is claiming to be the only one to have it even though we know or you might not know that the united states also do have it all right because let's let's just use logic all right the russia has a military uh, budget of 70 to 75 billion the united states have over spends over 10 times that all right 750 to 800 billion on their military budget. So, of course, they have it. They're just not going to tell you that they have it. So, trust me, the United States have hypersonic um, weapons as well. In fact, I have a former uh, Marine uh, personal contact that's he's, he's a veteran. He told me, look, we have it. You know, they have it already. You know, they just don't flex like all these other nations. The United States have it. They have the long, largest and strongest military. So, they're not going to have something that only Russia has. When they spend ten times the amount of uh, money into weapons in Russia, so they have it. The most I was gonna have them use these instruments to destroy themselves. And since we're typing, uh, talking hypersonic speed, I had took a screenshot, you know. And I think I think this would, is is very informative, you know. Uh, let's use this, the speeds of bullets, you know. So, um, anytime you go. Uh, faster than 1,125 uh, feet per second, you achieve Mach 1, basically breaking the sound barrier, right? So you have certain bullets that, you know, um, that break the sound barrier, right? Um, of Mach 1. Of Mach 1, right? 
Oh, part part in the background, Slocky brothers. You have certain bullets that's able to break the sound barrier, right? But then you have others that are um part of me. Yeah, so lucky about that. So let's go into the speed of sound, right? You have, and they describe in Mach 3. So you have certain fighter jets that are able to go up to Mach 3, which is three times the speeds of sound. Now I'm just bringing out this information to highlight how powerful these missiles are and how destructive and just a sheer miracle pursuant to the book of Revelations, the 16th chapter that this thing moves at, right? Let's use your average gun, a nine millimeter, right? Which is 1200 feet per second. Right, that, that 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 barely breaks a sound barrier. Now, the Russians have confirmed that the hypersonic avant-garde uh, glide uh, missile, hypersonic missile, is able to go 27 times the speed of sound. Mach 27. So that's damn near 20 times, over 20 times faster than your average bullet. And somebody made an important note on this quarry here. It says, um. It says once the bullet the bullet leaves the gun barrel, it starts to slowing down immediately, right? Which is true. It says while a jet while a jet powered vehicle, so it maintains its Mach three speeds at all times. So this missile is not going to decrease in speed. It's only going to be it's going to only it's only going to increase. And um, hypersonic technology, it man, that is just the most side behind it. It's just the most side behind it, man. Because um, I'm going to read something real quick in Daniel's 12th chapter in the fourth verse. It says, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Because, I mean, basically to have hypersonic speeds is pretty much... To have a jet go hypersonic is like trying to light a match in a 2,000 mile per hour wind. You know, but they, these, they, these devils figured it out. You know, they figured it out. Something coming in from the atmosphere and you're able to glide it with TNT. <laughs> Yo, there's no stopping it. Okay, it's like trying to... Sh matter of fact, uh, when you intercept a missile, you're pretty much shooting a bullet with a bullet. Now, try to imagine shooting a bullet that could curve. That's the equivalent of trying to stop a hypersonic missile. It's insane, man. So this this once this destruction happens, there's no turning it back. And I mentioned that it was a miracle in that quote of Revelation, the 16th chapter. This is the, look, the particular verse in the, four, the 14th verse. It says, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles. Yeah, you have an, an instrument that's able to travel over 20 times the size, uh, 20 times, over 20 times the speed of a bullet, maintain the speed, and weigh almost f over 4,000 tons. That's insane. I mean, the kinetic energy alone, let's say the... Um, the warhead was defected, right? Which it's not because the scriptures in Joel told us that they're not going to break their ranks. None of that bullshit. They're not going to break down because the Mosai is going to be in the spirit of the fire guiding those missiles. But let's use hypotheticals, right? Let's say the warhead didn't detonate. The kinetic energy alone of a, of a missile, just like if it didn't detonate, just the kinetic energy alone will cause massive destruction because it's coming in fast. 20 times faster than a freaking bullet, man. It's crazy. But look, man, that shows you the, that the most high pursuing the Exodus 15 and 3 is a man of war and to, to create Isaiah 54 and 16, to put it in the mind of these Smiths to create something like this. It's going to go down in history. And it's, and it's the, the crazy thing about it is there's not going to, this is going to, once they're detonated, once they're used, they're not going to be built again ever. All right. We're not going to need them in the kingdom of heaven. It's just going to be a one-time thing. Just like how the Mosa had that much crazy amount of rain flood the earth. But you never see it rain like that again. So you're not going to see it rain fire like that again after this great destruction. It says, For they are, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather, them, to, gather to them the battle of that great day of the Almighty, Armageddon. I'm a God one, the amount of the troops, which we're in. All right. The tensions with Iran, uh, the tensions with Iran and um, the United States are great. That's the Greeks and the Persian coming again against each other. You know, and it's crazy because when they first went at it, the Persians were the 
enormous, unbeatable empire, godlike empire. And the Greeks were the small nations. Now, it's been a role reversal where the Greeks, in the form of the United States, so-called white man, is this massive 64% of the world's army, 700 and 50 to 800 billion dollars spent on a military nothing could take us down pride and now the, the persians which are the iranians are the smaller nation you know but the most is going to have them being backed by other different nations to take america down man and israel soon to the book of ezekiel 38 chapter now do i have now i this is jeremiah that shows you that these things are going to glitter jeremiah 51 and 11 Make bright the arrows. Now, when you shoot arrows in the ancient world, right, uh, hundreds of thousands of arrows, when they're coming in, they tend to blot out the sun, right? Uh, just watch the movie 300, our arrows shall blot out the sun. They did that in the ancient world. So much arrows being shot by hundreds of thousands of archers will blot out the sun. But these arrows, Jeremiah is saying, they're going to be made bright. And that's what they look like. You know, you see the when you watch a, a picture of the missiles, they look like falling stars. They look like like very glittery, right? And we already know that they represent arrows. So it says, make break the arrows. Meaning, let them shits off. Fire them joints, man. Don't keep them in the silos too long. Let them out. Gather the shields. The Lord Yahweh Hashem Yahshath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, which are the Russians today. All right, the land of the Medes. Um, today is being. Uh, dwelt by the so-called Russians. He says, for his device is against Babylon. Now, Babylon is not talking about ancient world Babylon. Okay? Babylon just means a confused land. And this is the confused land, all right? What makes it confused? You have a mixture of different religions, cultures, ideologies, languages, everything. Everything mixed up in a pot, all right? Just straight up confusion. Just imagine going into a grocery store and there was no aisles and everything was put everywhere and mixed up together. It will lead to nothing but confusion. You know, the eggs on the shelves next to clothes, you know. Just a mixture of everything. That's America. That's America. A whole bunch of different nations and ideologies jam-packed into one particular area trying to come together. All right. To destroy it. Why? Why is America going to be destroyed? For obvious reasons. It's totally in contrary to the law, statute, and commandments of the Bible. Every single law, statute, and commandment in the Bible is being broken here in America. Um, willingly. You know? Because it is the vengeance of the Lord. Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. So America is going to take vengeance on the... Uh, the Lord is going to take vengeance on America. Because pursuant to the book of Nahum, the third chapter, it's a bloody city. Just like the ancient world of Syrians... Prophetically speaking, America is the same way. And prophetically speaking, the so-called white man has the spirit of the ancient world of Syrian, Assyrians, which were a warlike, war completely ruthless, um, unmerciful, savage, um, skillful warrior type race of people, type of rulership, man. I'm talking about flaying people alive. And the so-called white man gets down the same way, man. All right. When they get in a military, you know, taking advantage of these different nations, which we don't give two fucks about. But that's just the nature of this devil, man, to be disruptive and and just, a, you know, just an instrument of destruction. The scriptures call him a sword. And that's what he does. That's what he brings. Death and destruction. So for that, the most is going to take vengeance upon him, man. In fact, how did he get this land to deception and rape, robbery and murder of the Native Americans, which are. A part of the tribe that makes up the body of the nation of Israel, man. And the scripture speaker tells you in Zechariah what happens when you touch the apple of the Lord's eyes, all right, which are his people, the sons and daughters of Israel. Yahshua Allah, he's a prince of the power. It says the vengeance of his temple. See that? And we're his temple. Acts 7 and 48, the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands. And the Apostle Paul tells us the same thing that we're the temple of the Most High. So when you defile, when you, um, defiled us by having us worship in your so-called christianity uh, put us in captivity destroyed us all right the most i didn't care about you know physical temple being built man it's about his people primarily his elect because guess what the elect were being slain too man by these devils and yes we were paying for what our tribe as a whole did so you know when someone says you know i met you know there's no just um 
uh, somebody says, look, I met a good white person. Well, okay, cool. All right, let's 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 use that. Let's say you, you met a so-called white person that was good to you your entire life. He, you know, you never he never wronged you. He was always upright with you, and you know he's he's not a Jake. He's not an Israelite fawn. He's a straight up Edomite, and you know he believes in equal rights and standing up. For, well, guess what? Even if that's the case, the Most High Judge as a nation. All right. So even you, even if you so-called bump into a good, eat of my heck, my so my my last boss was a so-called Jew. He never gave me no problems. He and if I ever had an issue, he always sorted it out. He never gave me no problems. My money was always straight and all that shit. But it doesn't matter because the Most High judge a nation as a whole, man. All right. So that's what's gonna happen. And when we get on the so-called white man, we're getting on primarily um the elites all right you know the so-called jews all right and the ruling class of the so-called white man you know because there's a lot of average crackers out there that pretty much don't know what's going on you know they just live in a life and you know they still a bunch of devils you know of course that you know but they're not some of them might not be you know on a council of foreign relations and the council of 13 and all that type of shit you know they just, they just have basic knowledge but it doesn't matter because the Mosai is going to judge that entire nation, man. Just like we got judged. And still getting, you know, feeling the benefit, uh, not the benefits, the uh, repercussions of our actions, man. So, um, there's one more scripture I wanted to get. Uh, there we go. This is uh, 2nd Ezra, the 6th chapter, the 12th verse. Oh, pardon me, 16. I need 2nd Ezra 16. 16 and 12. This is 2nd Ezra 16 and 12. Uh, yeah. The earth quaketh, and the foundations, the foundations thereof. The sea ariseth up with the waves from the deep, and the waves of it are troubled, and the fishes thereof also before the Lord and before the glory of his power. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. So the Most High is going to put it in the minds of these nations to go into this Third World's War. Primary, whoever is leading Russia, whether it's Vladimir Putin or somebody else, he's going to put it in the mind of the king of uh, Gog and Magog to shoot this arrow. All right. Letting you know that the Most High is the one that's really bending that bow and letting the arrow fly. All right. Um says and the um for strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow his arrows that he shooteth are sharp we already went into the sharpness going into the tech how technologically advanced these missiles are becoming man the more technology technologically advanced they get it's the equivalent to taking a stone and sharpening your sword you know so you know what you know what I'm, i also meditate on the fact that they release this information it makes you wonder what they really have because you don't really release what you just have, you know. That's the tactic the United States don't do. They just drop shit when it's ready. So imagine what they have in the works. Maybe missiles are able to go up to Mach 33. Hey, look, the scriptures tell you that this whole thing is going to be wiped out in an hour, America. And America is a massive land. So it has to be some great technology that's able to do that. Even though right now... You know, the missiles uh, that they have from the 60s, the bombs that they have from the 60s could destroy a, a bulk of America, man. But the Satan 2, all right, is able to take out the entire landmass of Texas. So there is some shit out there, man, and the Mosai is all behind it. It says, For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. His arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss because they're going to be laser guided. And as we read about in the hypersonic, uh, avant-garde glide uh, missile it's able to adjust course mid-flight at hypersonic speeds how do you how do you stop that how do you something that's able that's moving faster than a bullet and able to glide into different speeds you're done that's it the only thing you could do is evacuate but evacuate to where it says when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world so the end of the world for Ezra will be here over here in america man because Ezra was in the middle east the far west Primarily, California will be considered the ends of the world from his perspective, right? So, they are going to be they're going to be shot from the east to the west, and you can't shoot arrows 
from continent to continent. Let's be realistic, all right? So what is it talking about? It's talking about intercontinental ballistic missiles, man. All right, and when you have intercontinental, intercontinental ballistic missiles, the missiles don't have to travel at uh, infinite um, distance, which Russia's already working on that, a missile that could travel infinite distance. But it doesn't matter. Once you have ICBMs, you can hit any target anywhere in the world. It's just a matter of how long, you know? So, yep, the Mossad pretty much gave them the technology to destroy themselves, man. You know? So you average Jakes out there that want to come against a so-called white man with your AK-47s and, you know, attack them so-called Jews for gentrifying your neighborhood. See the larger picture. All right, so with that, I'm going to give all praises to <clears throat> Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rekakodash, the blinds to the apostles, and the elders of great mills on you well, and salutations to all for the elect out there. You are came to the that do the thing, the utmost truth and sincerity. Shalom.